All right, so uh, I already made a video today and I posted it and I was wrong uh, on a lot of stuff. And I just, I don't want to like just make it disappear and not explain myself, even though like 600 people was all that saw it because I took it down within like 30 minutes of being posted or even less than that. So uh, basically, I was doing like the anti 3950X video. Today on the program, why I'm not ever gonna upgrade and why you don't need to upgrade and I'll never review the 3950X just to kind of disturb the shit a bit because AMD didn't send you one because you're not popular enough. Uh, because two days ago, my kid woke up at like 9.30 in, at night, like a couple hours after going to bed, just vomiting excessively until like three in the morning, like th threw up so many times. And then of course he was way better the next day, but stayed home from school. And then I started getting sick. And then today I felt a little bit better, but I didn't have very much prepared in the 3950X launch. So I thought I'd tell my story as to why I was completely fine buying the 3900X. And in doing so, I brought up some points that were completely untrue, mostly to do with, I thought General Ryzen didn't have ECC memory support. And it does. You can apparently, if the motherboard supports it, and a lot of them do, uh, just put some ECC non or unbuffered, non-registered memory in Ryzen and it'll work. So you can get error correction with this. That's fun. Uh, I actually even saw Wendell do a video from Level One Tech uh, about you know doing it like two years ago in like twenty like the the first gen Ryzen or second gen Ryzen talking about how it was hard to get fast ECC memory that was uh, you know Samsung B die so the, you know this has been a thing for a long time and I knew Threadripper had the, the the support for it but I guess I just totally gapped or didn't know that Ryzen supports ECC memory so that takes. One of my big points off of why you wouldn't buy the 16 core if you're into core heavy workloads. It's kind of a silly thing. So uh, anyways, my whole point of this video was to kind of show why I didn't opt to wait for the 3950X, knowing I wasn't gonna get one from AMD, obviously, uh, when I was looking to get a better than 3700X processor for video editing. And in turn, I just kind of made myself look like a horse's ass. So I'm here to just explain myself a little bit. So. Um, I had the 2950X uh, Threadripper CPU, and then when Ryzen launched, I got a 3700X from AMD. Thank you, AMD. And the timeline editing, uh, you know, component of how much faster that CPU was made me switch from Threadripper. Like it actually handled the 4K files coming out of this uh, Panasonic G7 camera uh, a little bit faster and noticeably better with like transitions and stuff like that and speeding things up and doing different effects, you know? So I switched over to the 3700X and all I did was I ended up having to wait a little longer for my end renders. Like uh, with the Threadripper, there's 16 cores, 32 threads, it was 20. <laughs> You know, it was pretty fast, but the per core, you know, frequency wasn't as good or, or speed. So uh, when I, you know, was thinking of upgrading that 3700 so I could get back that 16 core performance from Threadripper in just the rendering part, uh, I thought this would be good enough for sure. Because if you go and check all, you know, multi-core benchmarks, this actually matches the 3900, the previous Threadripper 16 core processor, or even beats it in a few cases because the IPC is so much faster on the 3900. Uh, so then you know, I'm thinking, should I wait for the 3950X just so I can have a 16 core processor? And I thought, no, because it's not fast enough in games to use as a GPU test bench. I have a 9900K for that, as we'll see. So I'm gonna show you what computers I'm using in just a second. Uh, we'll go back to the footage from the old video. But uh, in turn, um, you know, I just didn't think that uh, saving a couple of minutes on that render, because it ends up being pretty fast with this, as fast as it was with the Threadripper, getting four more cores and eight more threads isn't gonna help me in video editing. So I'm thinking, who would actually use, uh, you know, this 3950X because it doesn't support ECC? Well, it does. It only has two channels of memory bandwidth. Yeah, that's gonna be a problem for some workloads. But then my another argument I had was it, uh, you know, wouldn't support as much memory, but there's 32 gig DIMMs nowadays. Therefore, you could have 128 gigs of memory on Ryzen if you really wanted to. It'd be very expensive, but it's possible. So there's gotta be more people out there that are happy about this 3950X being launched than I initially thought, but I still think it's kind of a, you know, it's a niche product, you gotta admit that. And if you're a gamer and you're buying it, or you're just an a fanboy, which came out in really quickly against that last video I posted because of the thing, wrong things and I was 
basically down talking the 3950X, uh, then maybe you'll buy it just because you want it. But the uh, people out there that need that kind of horsepower, I think are going to be kind of limited. And yeah, it's going to fill a niche market for like, you know, big workstations on a budget. But if you're doing you know, some pretty heavy workloads, you're probably gonna wanna go with, uh, you know, the, the upper platform, either Threadripper or an X299 with one of uh, Intel's higher end CPUs, I would imagine, or you're gonna be ordering a workstation with a Xeon in it or something. But ultimately, it's it's really cool that they launched this consumer desktop CPU. I just, it's, it's kinda like they put all their cards on the table and uh, it, I'm wondering if the innovation will still be there, you know, next year and the year after from AMD now that they've done so much. I just hope they don't kick up their feet and think like, wow, we don't have to work too, too hard. So uh, this has been me blathering for a long time. I'll come back and I'll say goodbye in just a second. But uh, here's me showing you guys what I have for hardware in my studio, uh, you know, for testing right now, because I thought I wanted to go through some of it. There's some donated stuff from uh, some memory and some case manufacturers and stuff I wanted to actually show you guys that, you know, and, and you know, fulfill my receiving those samples and whatever. You get it, YouTube stuff. And then I'll come back and I'll uh, say sorry again. So just once here, let's go check out what I've got for, for my stuff. What I wanted to do at the end of this video, I know I've been blabbing at you for a second. I'll try and go through this quick is show you where I'm at with all of my hardware and why I'm like red, I'm just super happy with it all. And I finally have everything I'd want and it's all working out well. So this is that MSI computer I built a little while ago, even like Science Studio and Der Bauer did that build where they have their Secura case. MSI gave us a bunch of hardware and paid us to make computers. And I took that amazing computer and I made it its best. Okay, sort of. Uh, so I took that and I took the fans out of the front of the Secura case. There was two 200 mil fans in the front and they were inside here getting very little airflow. And I actually put three 120 mil fans in there so that we get a lot more airflow coming into this amazing case. I really like this case. It's humongous. It's overkill. It's pretty cool. Then I put a 360 mil Castle uh, 360 EX in here because it's better for cooling performance over the Cooler Master one that they had done. It's a, it was a 240 and it was loud and it wasn't even an Ace Attack. So this one here is one of the best AIOs out there and it's keeping this 3900X at 4.3 gigahertz all time and it is silent. It is absolutely silent the way I have it set up until I hit render and you hear it ever so slightly for the you know five minutes that my 4K renders take. And that's that's the only time I ever hear this system the way I have it set up, which is pretty cool. That's 12 thread or 12 course, 24 threads running at 4.3 gigahertz all the time. And I barely ever hear this thing. It's, it's wonderful. And then uh, I want to give um, G-Scale a big shout out. They gave me this kit of uh, Trident Z Neo 3600 megahertz and I replaced the uh, Dominator on the MIG uh, Ace motherboard because it's 400 megahertz faster and it's meant for Ryzen right there. And you enable the MC XMP profile at 3600 megahertz and it just works. So for those of you out there who are looking for really good optimized RAM, fast RAM, I mean, it's only CL16, 19, 19, 39, but I just enabled XMP profile and I've got 3600 megahertz RAM. It's a sweet spot for Ryzen and it's working and I've never had a crash or an issue. So there, there's a, a big shout out to them. This is really good stuff. Try it at Neo if you're going Ryzen. This is what I recommend for like a no brainer. You know, I don't have to, you know, go and play with the timings or, you know, up the voltage or whatever. This just works. And then uh, what came with that system also was this uh, MP600, 5,000 megabyte a second NVMe drive. I put my Windows drive on this. I cloned it on there and never looked back. I took the original uh, one terabyte um, uh, NVMe drive I was using that was like a pretty fast one as it was. And uh, I use it as a scratch drive for my video editing files. And then there's a couple, there's one, two, three, uh, four terabyte drives in there that I use for storage for my video files and stuff before they go off to my NAS for, you know, final archiving and stuff like that. So I have an Aver Media 4K capture card that is amazing. Barely ever have any issues with it. Uh, and that's tucked away in there. That's about it for this system, except for um, you'll notice it doesn't have a 5700 in here. That's what I got with the system originally was uh, an MSI version of the like the small one of the uh, 30, 5700. 
it doesn't work well with my video editing software. Otherwise, I probably would have kept it in there. I don't need a high-end card in here. Well, I need a certain level of card. I bet even an RX 580 would work fine for video editing. I don't game on this system. But in there right now is a uh, Nitro Vega 56, and it just happened to be, I uh, used it for a video, and it's a big fat video card that I put in there. It's not the most efficient or anything like that, but it's certainly good enough to video edit off of. So that's pretty much this system in a nutshell. It's quiet, it's awesomely fast, and uh, it's everything I need in a video editing system. And would I be better upgrading to the 3950X? I don't think so. It would save me a couple minutes a week, honestly, in final renders. That's all it would do. So it doesn't make sense for me to buy it, except for to maybe make a video about it or something. And I'm not prepared to spend like $1,000 Canadian on another CPU right now. So there we go. So moving over here, this is my test bench. And I finally updated it to a real test bench. Before I had this weird aluminum Ryzen case that this guy had made me, um, it, 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 I don't know, it goes way back, maybe if you're an early subscriber you might remember, I had this like aluminum case built and it really didn't make sense and it had terrible airflow. I turned it into a test bench and I was using it for forever, but oh my god, it was so heavy and cumbersome to use and it really wasn't meant for uh, being a test bench. I have upgraded to, I got this for uh, 50 bucks on Kijiji and uh, it's no good. It's a Lee and Lee test bench from like probably six, seven years ago. And this handle here is too low and I can't fit those big giant video cards like the MSI Tri-X in there uh, without taking it off. Now I can, I can take it off if I need to, like these are thumb screws and I, like I could take this handle out so it's not the worst, but I, I should have got a proper test bench. It's really hard to find good test benches these days for anywhere less than like $200. So on there, I've got a 240 mil castle, which is good enough to test any motherboard and CPU. I'm gonna be really putting it on there for now. And I got a 1070, I actually have a whole system on there with a 3600 that I was testing. I'm gonna be doing a build with a 3600 and uh, a 1070 Ti uh, probably for next week. But uh, it has a 1200 watt power supply from FSP on there. So I really can cover like SLI or anything with this thing. And and uh, it's got, you know, just a Samsung SSD in there. This is my uh, c CPU and motherboard test bench, and I'm pretty happy with it. I even have some of that Dominator memory from the other build in there. And then, uh, last but not least, if we come over here, there we go. This is my uh, GPU test bench. It's got a 9900K, which I got from a buddy for $400 Canadian. Super good deal. And it's even got a decent silicon lottery. I've had it up to 5.3 gigahertz with this AIO, and it works. But for day-to-day -day performance, I've got it at 5.1 gigahertz with uh, some 3600 megahertz G-Skill RAM in there again. Actually, it's 4266, but I have it set to 3600 megahertz because that's about as fast as it runs without super messing with it. So that's just the RAM I had laying around there. You don't need more than 16 gigs, but if I needed to, I could put 32 gigs in there, but 16 gigs is just fine enough for me. I've got uh, it all running in the uh, H710i case from NZXT. Super amazing high-end case to build in. I would probably not get the i version because I'm not using any of the i version stuff with it right now, which is just like a little controller box that you can control with their cam software. I do have to use the cam software because that's how I control the Kraken X72 that's in there right now. But uh, yeah, and then you'll notice my 2080 Ti with the Accelero on it in there, and uh, that one's running an NVMe drive as well. So uh, this is super, super fast. I've actually been uh, playing Crisis all the way through, uh, and I'll be playing Crisis, probably a little bit of Crisis 2 and some Crisis 3 for the RTX 2080 Ti versus old game series that I've started, which uh, was fairly popular with the Max Payne one, so I'm gonna do it again with Crisis. Playing Crisis through, <laughs> playing through Crisis 1, it's really hilarious, it only uses like four threads. <laughs> so it'll be really interesting to see how that CPU does nothing for Crisis 1. And Crisis 1 actually still looks very, very decent, and it's fun to run it on really high-end hardware, way beyond what, uh, you know, anything at the time of Crisis's launch was, you know, was available then. So it's pretty cool to see that game maxed out at 4K, so stick around for that. But we have a 9900K system, and I'll grab that GPU and actually probably put the regular cooler back on it. It's just so fast, the 2080 Ti, that I don't need to overclock it. And as long as the blower is keeping it, you know, well within spec of, uh, you know, throttling, then it's better. It can actually fit it in there without having to, you know, take that top, you know, handle off. 
That's more what that's meant for. But because I've been doing the 28, you know, I've got to have it on the best system. So yeah, th that's my system. Uh, NZXT, I want to thank you for sending out that case. It's really, really decent for a high-end case. It's super premium. You'll see some, you know, build video of me doing the, the, the build in it. And uh, I have zero complaints about it except for that eye thing. And Gamers Nexus has made this fairly apparent. It's not worth the extra for the eye. Just the case itself is what's good here. You can do vertical GPU mounting in it. You could do water cooling in this. It's got that nice bar that runs through it that hides some of your cables and stuff. And it'll fit pretty much any video card, you know, uh, configuration. It'll fit, you know, uh, 360 mil rad in a lot of, in you know, the top end and the side. Really, really nice case. That about does it, I think. So, okay, so yes, that's all the stuff I've got. And I actually have a lot on the go. So this video style, I, did, I used to do a lot more because I didn't used to have, you know, like this sent to me from, you know, or uh, maybe you know what this is. I, I'm not allowed to show this. Um, yeah, uh, I got lots of products being sent to me all the time. So for me to sit down and uh, just do a trolling video on the latest AMD processor is kind of beneath me at this point, but I actually, legitimately was thinking I don't want the 3950X because it would go very much unused for my particular workflow and I use a computer probably a hell of a lot more than you guys out there because I do game with you know that 9900K and that 2080Ti or other systems I have around but I do video edit and use Photoshop and use audio editing and do you know certain things and like render effects and do chroma key and stuff like that from time to time so i do more work than a lot of you guys out there probably do so i was thinking like 3950x is kind of overkill even this is kind of overkill but i i really like the cpu it's super fast am i gonna get 250 dollars worth of extra performance out of it if i go and buy the 3950x not really not not for my particular workflow not for a lot of you guys but i guess it's pretty damn cool that we have 16 cores, 32 threads on a consumer platform. And they basically move the bar so high that Intel will take forever to catch up. But uh, I'm worried it will lead to stagnation because AMD just keeps putting all their chips on the table. What I'd love to see from AMD actually is big Navi and little Navi. I wish that we saw as many GPU launches this year as we did for uh, CPU launches from them because that's what we really need from them right now. So I hope that makes sense. So I'm at Watch Joe Instagram and Twitter. If you want to go check me out on Twitter and Instagram and do the YouTube things, smash the like button, unsubscribe because you thought I would made a dumb video. Do all that stuff. I don't care. <laughs> but I do have quite a bit of I, I have uh, a build coming up with uh, 3600 and uh, 20, 1070 Ti. I think that's like super sweet spot for uh, some budgetary, you know, high to mid range gaming. I have uh, some black CPU coolers. I've got an all white build coming up from Deep Cool. That case I just showed you, I'm not supposed to show you yet, but uh, it might be from Lee and Lee. Uh, and that's coming up near the end of the month. Lots of stuff. I got a gaming computer from Corsair in the mail today. Uh, monitor from Biotech. There's lots of stuff for me to do. So I probably shouldn't be wasting your time trolling the 3950X uh, on launch day just because I don't have one and I don't really see the need to have one. And I think that was kind of beneath me, so I'm sorry. Hit the down like and uh, go comment, in, you know, how dumb I am in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys with a better video next week. <laughs>